You went to work for, well, for yourself as a, like a truck no, mechanic? I or? To, they, they put these guys, they could go to work like say, I work for Sunset Auto Electric. Oh, okay. They, they had this system where you can go in and they paid you so much about that and then the government give you a check every month, you know. Like an on-the-job training on -the -job program? Training, yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, where were you? You were born in Cohoes? Yes. When were you born? Uh, June 26, 1918. But I, I didn't stay there very long. It was, that was, that was during the war, mm -hmm. the first war. And my father went out and he bought a home in the, out in the country. He thought he was doing somebody good, you know, the country. Mm -hmm. And that's his reading. I was only about six months when I left the post. Mm -hmm. What was your educational background prior to entering the service? Well, I started, uh, you probably understand this, maybe you, I don't know, they had the CC camp. Oh yes, yeah. Civilian yeah. Conservation Corps. Yes, and uh, it was me and my sister, and it was either her going to high school, or me going to high school, and one of us had a, my parents couldn't afford both, you know. Mm -hmm. So I went in the CCs, and my sister went through high school. And when I came back out of the CC camp, I, didn't finish school. I was going to finish it, but I didn't finish it. Now they pay you going through CCC? Dollar a day, thirty dollars a month. Well, right. What did you do there? Well, we built dams, roads, mm -hmm. and built that blister rust up north in the Adirondacks. We did all everything conservation department. Mm -hmm. you know? They did good work, very good. Were you fed well? And oh yes, we had uniforms and. All their clothes, everything, underclothes, everything. Mm -hmm. The food was very good. It didn't matter. I thought it'd be a wonderful thing right now as they had it today. Yeah. Get these kids off the street, you know? Really. I'm, I, I thought it was very good for the kids. Do you, do you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Yes, I was driving a truck. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. How did you hear about it? I heard it on the radio on my truck. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I was just coming in and he screamed, bush and uh, that's when I heard about it. Well, how did you feel when you heard about that? Well, I guess we all thought about the same. You know? mm -hmm. It's kind of bad. Yeah. Did you enlist or were you drafted? I drafted. And what branch of service did you go into? The Army. Okay. When, when did you go in? Do you remember? 44, July. Okay. Where'd you go for your basic training? Fort Dix. No, not, I went through Fort Dix, but I went through uh, in Texas, Camp Walters in Texas. Oh, okay. Basic training, yes. Did you go on to a specialty school or anything? No, I didn't. It was, they were hurting. Uh -huh. That's when the time was a bulge. Yeah. And they were hurting for it. As soon as you finish basic, it's you were gone. You so know. you were an infantryman then? Yeah. I had 11 days home. It's a, they call it a delay in rule. Well, you probably yeah. you got that. Yeah. Too. But, uh, so you were shipped overseas almost right away then right after away. you? 11 days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, did you go in a convoy or a single ship? or? No, we were in convoys. Mm -hmm. what, did you go as a replacement? Well, no, just. I couldn't say replacement, no, it was just a mess, you know, we were trying to get all I could get over there, mm -hmm. because it was just about the end of the bulge, you mm -hmm. know. I went to Hard France, that's where I landed. I was with Patton. Oh, okay, so you were... I was actually in the 11th Armored Division. Did you ever see Patton yourself? Oh, yes, I see him. Yeah. Did you ever have any encounters or talk? No, it's, it, it, they got him all wrong. He's a wonderful person. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't, you know, there was rumors and everything. It's, there was a lot of jokes about it, you know. He was on the front lines of the Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a good man. Real good man, I thought he was. Mm -hmm. Troops liked him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when did you see your first combat? As soon as the ship landed, it took us 17 days to go across. And as soon as the ship landed,
Did you uh, fight in, at all on the bulge, or did you get no. there just as it ended? No, I was, we were on notice at La Haire, France, mm -hmm. and then from there they took us in a big bivouac area and put us in a great big field. And that night, about 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, the, the Germans came over and strafed us and everything. Quite a few people got killed then. Mm -hmm. you know? That was my first experience, you know. What about winter equipment and, and clothing? Was that sufficient? Well, I guess it was. I hmm. think so. I don't know. We had to do what we had to do. It took, that was it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he was a very good general. I thought he was. We had all good officers. Mm -hmm. There wasn't much they could do. Were you ever wounded or injured? No, I, had, I got frostbite. Mm -hmm. Is that giving you a problems over the years? It has, and now I got Paget's disease in you know, one leg. Uh -huh. And uh, that's why I went to the hospital down there. I went down there and the veterans thing to see what I could do to get out of them or something, you know. But they don't want to hear about it, you know. They got more people down there that's, mm. that they'll ever take care of. Mm -hmm. What kind of weapon did you carry? Did you carry the M1? M1. Mm -hmm. well, how'd you think, how'd you like it as a, as a weapon? I thought it was very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little heavy. A lot of people tried it, and I did myself, but uh, we'd capture Germans and we'd take their rifle because they had a nice little Burke gun, you know? Oh, yeah. It was light. And, mm -hmm. So it said the same ammunition. So, but it was very light. The M1 is very heavy. How would, what do you think of your officers, the ones that were directly over you? Well, most of the time we'd have a second lieutenant jamming. Once in a while, a first lieutenant, but most of the time you have second lieutenants that's jamming your commanding officer. You know. Mm -hmm. What were they like most of? Them? Well, it's like anything, you know. You couldn't find them when you wanted them. You know? <laughs> Now, that's the first guy I'd, I see get killed was the second lieutenant officer. He's standing right alongside of me on a pillbox, and one shell was fired, and it got him out. I had to get him through the arch, you know, because mm -hmm. these pillboxes are concealed very good. We were standing on top and didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And where did you go next? Well, we tried to get out of there, and the Germans had this all zeroed in, you know? Uh-huh. They pinned us down for most of the day. Then we got out of there, and then we went out different ways and directions and towards the Germans, you know? That's the only thing we could do. Now, you followed with Patton all the way through through Germany, and... Yeah, I went all the way to Berlin, from mm -hmm. the heart of France to Berlin. Were they things that stand out more than others? Are there any stories that you recall that you want to tell us about? No, I don't think so. We got pretty busy. Mm -hmm. you know? Everybody got pretty busy. Mm -hmm. Now, with Pat moving so fast, did you ever drive, ride on the tanks or did you? Oh, yeah, I drove them. The last end, I, I walked on. There was two of us on, it, on one tank. Mm -hmm. they, they were, <clears throat> there were tanks. We go. We was going behind the lines and see how strong they was and how many tanks they got. Mm -hmm. We had radio equipment in there, and we called the Air Force in, you know, and uh, that was pretty good. It was. Did you ever liberate any of the concentration camps? Yes. Yeah, quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. We had one forced march. It was long. Some of the kids and the old people were in it. Mm -hmm. you know? But most of them were killed in, and they were on their hands and knees, and they were shot through the head, you know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, How did you feel when you saw these camps? I guess everybody felt the same, that uh, that was the job, and we had to do it. Mm -hmm. Did you know they existed prior to that, or? No. Oh, yeah, we knew it when during the war, we were told about it, you know, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, we were, well. 
Medication is pretty good. Now, when you reached Berlin, did you have to stop uh, and meet? Did you meet up with the Russian soldiers at all? Well, that's a good question. You know, it's yeah, we were in Berlin, and uh, the Russians were at the other side of the Elbe River. Mm -hmm. When they took us out of there, Berlin, we had to go back about you know, three to six miles. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know how the Russians ever got in, but they they made it after a while. They had an awful time passing, getting across that river, you know. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, they were rough troops, but uh, mm -hmm. I guess they didn't have nothing up there, upstairs. And, but they ended up with having taken Berlin. Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, toward the end, were there a lot of Germans surrendering to your units? Yeah, and one, more than we could handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just took them out in the big fields and built fences up and uh, done the best we can, you know. Because they didn't want to... They didn't want to be surrendered to the Russians. No <laughs> way. No way. There were people, women and things, jumping out of windows and everything, you know. Yeah. Are there any experiences that stand out more than others that you recall? Yeah, I think with the kids and the old people, they stand out, will stand out, you know. We, I can't remember the, the, the name of the concentration camps that, that we, you know, took over. But uh, there was one there that they say this woman was taking human bodies and making lampshades, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I, I think that was Auschwitz. Yeah, yeah. There's all sorts of things, you know, so many years now, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember uh, where you were when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? Uh, it was right in the middle of it somewhere. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't even know what month that was. It was April of 45. Yeah. yeah. I guess I went and I had. Uh, What you call them? Uh, frostbite. You know, on the Sigford line, you know, mm -hmm. you remember probably know that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were there three weeks, and most of it got frostbite and everything. You know, it was in February. Yeah. And, uh, it was kind of cold. And, and foxholes, all we had. All right. Um, how long were, did you stay in Germany after the, did you stay in after the war? Yeah, I was in Camp Philip, I think Camp Philip Morris, I think, mm -hmm. that was outside of Paris. And I think we were there about at least three weeks, maybe four weeks, trying to get a boat home. Mm -hmm. Did you get to see any USO shows at all? One, Bob Holt. Uh-huh. Yeah. That was in combat. When did you return home? Uh, well, I landed Christmas afternoon in Virginia. Was that 1946? 40, 45. 45, okay. You came back in 45, okay. When were you discharged? Well, they asked me if I wanted to go home for three or four day pass, you know, for uh, mm -hmm. the holidays, because I have two kids and my wife. I took it, but when I when I went home, I stayed or stayed a, a week, and then I come back and they said they don't care. And then I got discharged. Okay. Now you said you used the GI Bill. Did you yes. use the GI Bill uh, no. for my job? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. For training, did you ever buy a house using the GI Bill too? Or yeah, I bought a couple of houses, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I didn't keep them too long. I had bad tenants. I'm not going to cry about it. It's just over with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you ever use the 5220 club? No, you know, I never got a penny out of that. I never thought, I never placed an unemployment in my life. Mm -hmm. And the 5220 club, that, I could have got it, but my son and uh, brother in law, I got a job in Republic Steel and I was only home two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I went to work. Okay. Um, did you ever stay in contact with anyone that was in service with you? No, not too much. Mm -hmm. No. 
to join a uh, veterans organization? No. no. How do you think your time in the service changed or had an effect on your life? I don't know. It's hard to say. You know, kind of makes you bitter. I think a lot of times, if you think about it, better off to forget it. You, know? mm -hmm. <laughs> you did it for your country. It's all. Yeah. I thought there, was, there might be some dates on this or something. But. On your DD-214, there probably would be. Yeah. Yeah, this shows the service record. So here's some of the places I got. I got four battle stars that are from. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for your interview.